Mm, well, the the current level at seven five eighty is uh, um, is actually a, a, a tad lower the seven six expected support. But uh, as we can see from from yesterday's price action, the the, the market was really weak. Now, in, in my opinion, the um, f based from 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 yesterday's market action, we can still see some some downside from here. No, but but I th but I think the the year end. Uh, possible window dressing can keep the, the the index at least no at present level. So maybe we can see uh, a, a decline to maybe around seven four no. But but I think at, at year end um, it can rally to around uh, perhaps maybe seven five or seven six. Uh, Aaron, this is JP JP from the newsroom. Um, a question on PE ratios now. PE ratios for sorry, the PSE sorry, sorry. are really are still relatively high among most Philippine stocks. In fact, for the current forward PE ratios to come in line with some of our with the MSCI Asia Pacific uh, region, we may need to see the PSE fall below six thousand. Now, looking forward, we've talked about some of these um, some of these technicals also. But will the main index need to fall by that much to justify valuations and perhaps encourage investments to come back into the PSE? I would say yes. Um, of course, uh, cheaper valuations will uh, will will still be uh, more advantageous for for the local market, especially with uh, with some concerns about our uh, about 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 our main drivers of of the main drivers of the economy, given that given the um, the developments outside the country, especially in the U.S. No? so um, again, if if the Federal Reserve actually does what it's what it promises to do next year then maybe borrowing costs would be higher next year so as we know borrowing costs or the cost of money can um, can can affect mo many sectors no among which are the um, those that are dependent in, in loans no so banks and properties and of course it can also affect our currency so um, exports BPO can be affected by this development so um, cheaper valuations, uh, um, the the uh, economic development, well, the GDP is growing uh, fast. No, the, the GDP is growing uh, uh, as as expected. But cheaper valuation would provide a buffer for investors to when they come in. Um, it, it it would provide a buffer from further downside. Aaron, I, I was just about to correct you there. 6,500 is the level we're looking at, not 7,500. But I'm glad yes, you brought up. Sorry. And I'm glad yes. you brought up borrowing costs because I was just going to get to that. 6,4 Six four now. Yes. That, well, hovering between sixty four, sixty five hundred. The BSP says sentiment is very negative yes, at sorry. the moment, and even they don't know in exactly what is going on and of course this weaker peso uh, that's going to hurt appetite for investing won't it I mean take a look at first quarter through to the third quarter of next year we're already looking at solidly 50 to the greenback levels here yes actually the 50 pesos um, per US dollar is not uh, well, it's a reality now, no. But but we think it it's it will be um, lower next year again, given the adjustment in in foreign interest rates, but more specifically the U.S. No, if 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 economic growth, I, I think um, the U.S. revised its third quarter GDP last night. So if economic growth goes above expectation, then definitely the the Federal Reserve can have more elbow room to increase their rates. Then. Um, we may have some room not to not to be in sync nor completely in sync with the Fed, but eventually, if if um, if the foreign foreign um, cost of money or foreign return for their money um, increases, then we might not have the 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 uh, a, a big elbow room to to work around with. So. Perhaps if, if 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 inflation in the eurozone, if inflation in the federal reserve, uh, if inflation in the U.S. Um, uh, goes above target, then maybe interest rate increase is very imminent next year. Now, Aaron, again, I, I'm glad you brought up the idea of interest rates being perhaps imminent, or you know, the rate increases being imminent next year. A number of economists, of course, seeing that uh, BSP might raise rates in 2017, but how might this affect banking stocks in particular if local rates were to rise in the next six months? I mean, on one hand, some say that there might be some upside for interest income. On the other hand, they could see, we could see perhaps demand, demand for loans actually stunted. Um, which way, what's, the, what's your outlook on the banking sector in particular? Uh, for the banking sector, I think the demand will continue to be robust. You know? So demand will still be dependent on income. If income is 
um, is uh, is projected to still be um, buoyant in in in, the, in rough times. No, if if we consider next year to be uh, or if we look at next year to be a rougher times than than last year, um, I think demand will still be there. You no, know? um, people will still continue to. Um, to buy uh, houses and to take out loans for, to buy th those houses. But I think demand will, um, will be negatively affected. I think demand will be negatively affected, but, but not as much to be bad for the banking sector. In terms of, in terms of margins, um, if, if, the in, if interest rates increase next year, definitely the banks can now charge um, their clients a, a higher loan rate no but but still if if the if interest rate uh, if returns for for money will increase next year then the bank should pay their depositors more so i think interest rate, uh, uh, as far as margin is concerned inter, uh, margins will still be uh, uh, maybe unchanged for next year but i think demand is still it will still be there all right, Aaron Tsai, uh, market consultant at First Metro Securities. Thanks for your insights today.